Welcome back. I had a few students bring this up to me, so I want to bring it to your attention and make sure everybody knows that this is waiting for you, okay? And that's that the four proofs as you get into the heart rate, variability, resonant breathing, at first you're going to notice the proofs, and then the proofs may begin to disappear. And this is actually very good. It's actually a sign of progress. And so let's get into it. So when you first come into heart rate variability, resonant breathing, you maybe you download the app for your phone, resonant breathing, and you start up, you're into five minutes, you're into 10 minutes, it's great. And you start to notice the proofs. Where are these proofs coming from? From your parasympathetic system. And so they're proving to you that you are doing the technique correctly that you're making the out breath a little bit longer and you're breathing under seven breaths per minute. And because you're doing that, because you're following this breath work, then automatically your heart and your breath, they have time to sync up. And so they start going together. You breathe in, the heart rate goes up a little bit. And then you breathe out and the heart rate goes down so deliciously, so Beautifully, it dips down, and now you're going into a low, idle state. And because of that, you might notice that your hands get hot and heavy. That's the first proof. Then you might notice that your lips tingle. That's the second proof. Third, because the diaphragm is pushing the air out nice and slow, you get extra pressure, good pressure on the thoracic cavity. That pressure goes backwards and it stimulates the dorsal vagal complex, which is laying right on top of your spine, right? It's just right there between your heart and your spine. And that compression, that tiny compression is all you need. And you start feeling that ecstatic pressure along the dorsal vagal, maybe from the heart up to the medulla or maybe lower on the spine. It doesn't matter. But you start feeling that. That's the third proof. And oh my God, it's so delicious, right? And then the fourth proof shows up and this wonderful, magical thing starts to happen in the entire nervous system. And you feel this tingling all over your body, potentially. Maybe your hands are the most relaxed first, so you notice it in your hands, maybe your arms, maybe your thighs, maybe your face, maybe your chest. It doesn't really matter where it starts, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to complete, it doesn't have to get everywhere, but it potentially can. You can begin to feel it scintillating through your whole body. And this is the ascent. Maybe you remember this image I gave to you guys. This is the ascent of the four proofs. And we peek out at that tingling in the skin, right? That magical nervous system thing that's going on. And this is such a beautiful sign of the freeze response. And the freeze response comes on to us because we are working with and we are awakening the dorsal vagal complex. This is the most important part of the nervous system for meditation, the dorsal vagal parasympathetic. Parasympathetic means healing, restorative, the parasympathetic system. All right. Well, Forrest, what is a freeze response? I'm not used to this lingo. All right. Well, the freeze response happens to us every night when we go to sleep. And that's how you can dream and you can run up a hill and you can swim on the, in the lake and you can dash everywhere and you don't fall out of your bed because the signals that happen in your brain stay in your brain and the body is frozen. And that's the freeze response. It happens every single night. And because you are becoming so restive and tranquil in your meditation, you're going into that super low idle state. This freeze response is starting to come over the body. So the four proofs are our ascension into the dorsal vagal complex. 
the hands hot and heavy, the lips tingle, pressure, ecstatic pressure on the dorsal vagal, the skin begins to tingle. All of these are an ascension into heart rate variability resonance and into the dorsal vagal parasympathetic. Then this wonderful thing begins. The freeze response begins to take over the body more and more. And our perception of the body itself, it takes over that. And so the beginning of that is the skin tingling. All right. That is the beginning, a beginning sign, a beautiful beginning sign that the freeze response is taking over the body. Second, you might notice that parts of the body become numb. Now, this is not a normal numb when you've lost blood flow. That's not what I'm talking about. This is how a lot of yogis will describe to me that they're in the freeze response. Well, I couldn't feel this part of my body and I couldn't feel that part of my body. They tell me it's becoming numb. Now, I describe the same thing and I say my body becomes ghost-like. So, the legs might become ghost-like, the whole lower body might become ghost-like, the upper body might become ghost-like, any part of the body might become ghost-like or numb to you. And then parts of the body begin to disappear. And so maybe the lower half of the body disappears from your perception. It's not literally disappearing, of course, it's just disappearing from your perception. Maybe your arms disappear. Maybe the trunk of your body disappears. Maybe you only have the bottom of your body and the top of your head and the middle just kind of rounds out or begins to feel as if it's expanding into the air around you. Okay, that's a mini absorption by the way, but it's also a sign of this parts of the body disappearing in the freeze response. So the internal mapping that the brain does of the body is interrupted by the freeze response. And another one that might go along with parts of the body disappearing is kind of a dislocation. So you might notice that your head is over here and your body is over here. So they kind of, you know, the, the, you, the body feels very disjointed or you can feel your head is way up in the sky and your, your body's way down here separated. You've kind of stretched out somehow. That's a little bit of the body getting disjointed. That's that internal GPS system getting very interrupted and all of the signals are kind of crossed and you feel very strange. It's a... In the beginning, this feeling can be a little bit uh, discombobulating. Don't worry about it. It gets quite enjoyable. It's like, oh, my body's doing all kinds of weird stuff. And all of this helps you to disidentify from the story that you have been playing in your life. And then finally, the last one, the whole body begins to disappear. And it's not that it just shuts off. It potentially could, but more so, I think you're going to notice that it kind of dims out, dims out, and begins to disappear from your perception. And this is a very, very, very deep freeze response because then you're left with nothing but what? Do we say the mind? Well, the mind is not jabbering. So what do we call it? Well, the ancients called it the purusha, the soul. You're left with nothing but your soul. And that's the whole idea of meditation, isn't it? So while you're in that descent of the freeze response, are you going to notice the four proofs? Well, you could go back and you might notice them, but they're going to feel a little bit washed out because the entire perception of your body is getting washed out. Do you see? So that's the idea with this ascent and the descent. All right. So we go up into a climax of concentration. So you hear about access, concentration. This is what we're talking about. The mind gets clearer and clearer and clearer because you're going into a low idle state and that's reflexive on the mind. And so the mind clears up in this beautiful ascent and then everything begins to disappear in the freeze response. All right. And the mind settles down even more. It gets more clear and it turns into something beyond concentration. It turns into that mini absorption. You become absorbed in what you're thinking about. And that's why I say, think about expansion. 
think about expanding into space or expanding into the sky. And this is a beautiful way to begin to step into absorption. It's like, oh my God, Forrest, you talk about samadhi, you talk about absorption, you're, you're driving me nuts. How do I get into this? Get into a mini absorption. Feel yourself spreading into the space around you. And now you're not isolated in your tiny little story that you live every day. You are expanding into the right brain perception. The right brain sees everything as one. Not this and this and this and this. It sees one. <laughs> we don't live in two universe. We live in one universe, right? Just one. It's all one. That's how the right brain sees things. And so when you feel, because you're in a freeze response and everything is dimming out and you feel yourself expanding into the space around you, or you imagine you're in the sky and you feel yourself expanding into the sky, then you are entering into a little bit of the right brain. That's a mini absorption and it's beautiful. So that's what I offer to you today. Try to get into that mini absorption. Enjoy the freeze when it comes. Oh my God, it's so delicious. You can also have cool waves through the body. You can also have a cool river of energy coming up the spine. All of that is wonderful, but I'm giving you the really big chunks of the freeze response in that little picture, all right? All of these can happen. You can have this of the four proofs and this of the freeze response. All of it can kind of be non-linear. So don't expect this to be linear. I'm presenting it in a linear fashion so it makes sense to our left brain. We can kind of encapsulate the process, but it's really not that linear. It's really kind of all over. And so just go for the ride, enjoy the flow, and have fun with it. Enjoy your meditation because it's for you, right? So I hope that you loved this. I hope it makes sense and makes a little bit more clarity around the four proofs and the freeze response. Gives a really beautiful picture. Take a screenshot of that, save it on your phone, and look at that until it, you can easily remember it and it will be your best friend in meditation. So I hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.